My fellow prophecy student, greetings. It is common belief among Protestants that the papacy is the antichrist of Bible prophecy and that the Roman Catholic Church will be the agency by which the mark of the beast is implemented. However, while we can point to biblical and historical evidence as proof that the papacy will rise again in the last days, without the benefit of certain information, it will be difficult for us to say specifically how the mark of the beast will be issued. But we can rest assured that the Bible has furnished us with adequate information to enable us to make a well-informed deduction as to how precisely Revelation 13 will be fulfilled. It is one thing to have the idea that the papacy will play a dominant role in the fulfillment of last day events, but it's another thing to be able to give a precise forecast as to how they will implement their end time plans. Based on the findings of my latest research of the doctrines of Roman Catholicism, I must acknowledge that in spite of what many of us as prophecy students claimed to know about the mark of the beast issue, we still have quite a bit to learn concerning the subject. In order to ensure a meaningful discussion on this topic, the initial question we need to ask ourselves is, what really is the mark of the beast? There are two distinct methods by which the mark of the beast is interpreted. There is the symbolic application and there is the literal application. Let us first examine the symbolic application. Among the symbolic applications of the mark of the beast, Sunday observance appears to be the most credible. This conclusion was arrived at on the basis that the papacy claimed Sunday to be the mark of their ecclesiastical authority. Therefore, if the beast is identified as the papacy, then whatever the papacy claims as the mark of their authority is the mark of the beast. Since the papacy is prophesied to rise again in the last days, where the authority of Roman Catholicism is restored, the mark of that authority will most naturally follow. However, while this position is based on solid reasoning, it should be held with the understanding that it is not a stated interpretation in the Bible. It is a conclusion arrived at by logical deduction or by observing both historical and current data. Because of the way in which the prophet John describes the mark of the beast in relation to its receiver, the symbolic application could not be the only means of explanation. Otherwise, we would have difficulty explaining the possibility of suddenly becoming the mechanism by which the authorities determine who is to be allowed to buy and sell and who is not to be allowed such privileges. There would have to be some technological means to make such a determination, which takes us to the literal application. While Sunday observance can be considered the spiritual identification of the worshippers of the beast, treating the mark of the beast for its obvious meaning provides a physical identification. In his prediction, John distinctly tells us that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Therefore, there must be some physical means of identifying the worshippers of the beast so as to enable the system to determine who to allow and who not to allow to buy and sell. In the same way that the mark of the beast has a literal application, the seal of God also has a literal application. In Revelation 7 and verse 2, we are told that the angel was seen with the seal of the living God. In chapter 14 and verse 1, John says he saw the Father's name in the forehead of the 144,000. And in chapter 22 and verse 4, he says he saw the Father's name in the forehead of his servant. It is hardly likely that the Bible could speak thus of the seal of God and not referring to something tangible. Furthermore, in his letter to the church in Philadelphia, Christ promised to write upon them the name of his Father, the name of his city, and his new name. And for those among my Adventist brothers and sisters who maintain that the seal of God is not literal, here is what Ellen G. White has to say. Quote, the 144,000 were all sealed and perfectly united. On their foreheads was written, God, New Jerusalem, and the glorious star containing Jesus' new name. End of quote. This is taken from Spiritual Gifts, Volume 2, page 32. Here is another statement. While Satan was urging his accusations and seeking to destroy this company, holy angels unseen 
were passing to and fro, placing upon them the seal of the living God. End of quote. This is taken from Testimonies, Volume 5, page 75. What I'm trying to say here is that, in light of these evidences, we cannot dogmatically insist that the mark of the beast is not a literal mark. John distinctly tells us that he saw people receiving the beast mark in their foreheads and right hands in the same way he saw God's mark in the foreheads of his people, and in the same way Ellen White saw angels putting the seal of God upon his people. The focus of attention in this video is on the application of the mark of the beast in a literal sense. You are going to see how the information I am going to share with you makes tremendous sense when it is viewed in this way. Before I go any further, let me just say that the purpose of this video is not to attack Catholics. I personally believe that they are faithful, true-hearted Christians in the Catholic Church and that they are no less Christians than those of other denominations. However, because of the danger of remaining in a system of falsehood and deception, it becomes a matter of urgency that we get the truth out. When Protestant argues that the papacy is Antichrist and that the Roman Church is Babylon the Great, do they really have any biblical basis for saying that? In the interest of clarity, I am going to give you a quick summary of what the Bible says. You can do your own research for deeper understanding of the subject. In the Bible, it is prophesied that four kingdoms will rule the world just before the second coming of Christ. The kingdoms are as follows. Kingdom number one is Babylon. Babylon was succeeded by kingdom number two, Medo Persia. Then comes kingdom number three, the Grecian Empire. After the Grecian Empire, comes the fourth and final world kingdom, Rome. According to Daniel's prophecy, during the reign of Rome, the kingdom will be divided into ten at which time the world was to see a new manifestation of Roman rule. In describing the character of the final world kingdom after it was divided, the book of Daniel gave the following forecast. Quote, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High and sing to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and dividing of time. Daniel 7 and verse 25 The only power that came up after the Roman Empire was fragmented, fulfilling all these specifications, was the medieval papacy, the Catholic Church. This power was symbolized by the little horn of Daniel 7. Speaking of the final destruction of this little horn power, the Bible also gave the following prediction. I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Daniel 7 and verse 11. This is a clear forecast as to when this little horn is to be destroyed. That this is an obvious prophecy of what will take place at the second coming is made plain in Revelation 19. This chapter is clearly about the return of Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Speaking of the final destruction of the beast whose mark the world will take, the prophet John gave the following account. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 19 and verse 20 If the papal kingdom is represented in the scriptures as being destroyed in the last days, it therefore means that the papacy will have to rise again in order for this to be made possible. Thus the destruction of the little horn in the burning flame in Daniel 7 is identical to the destruction of the beast in Revelation 19 in a lake of fire and brimstone. If what the prophet John is actually predicting is the final sequel of Daniel's prophecy, then the mark of the beast will undoubtedly be implemented under a revived Roman Catholic regime. And this is an important point we should not lose sight of in spite of the prevalence of this erroneous view now being plastered all over YouTube that Barack Obama is the Antichrist. Another equally erroneous view that is also being promoted all over the internet 
is the idea that the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. This is clearly based on a misconception of what the whole issue is about. When you hold a view like this, the logical conclusion it is going to lead you to is that the issue is merely about a mark and whether you take the mark voluntarily or involuntarily you are condemned to hell. Based on this position, a lot of people will end up being innocent victims of the seven last plagues. This is certainly not the best way to represent a loving and merciful God. The mark of the beast has got to be something which involves the voluntary action of the receiver. Those who accept the mark of the beast will not be punished because God holds some distaste for a certain mark. They will be punished because the mark identifies them as the worshippers of the beast and hence the rejectors of God's mercy. If you are even among the average prophecy student, you should be well familiar with all that has been said so far. These are matters we have been studying over the years and therefore should not be seen as anything new. Now, here is what you may not be aware of. Did you know that there is undeniable proof that the scheme by which the mark of the beast system will be issued is already established by statute in Roman Catholic canon laws? Yes, you heard right. This is no propaganda or conspiracy theory. This is credible information that is 100% verified by official literature of the Roman Catholic Church. From prophecy research in conjunction with investigation into the doctrines of Roman Catholicism, it has been discovered that the whole philosophy in relation to the issuing of the mark of the beast represents an existing church policy that every Roman Catholic is aware of but has no idea of its prophetic significance. Which church policy could that be? You are going to be shocked when you hear what it is. It is going to change the way you think about the whole mark of the beast issue and how the number 666 fits into the whole scheme of things. Do you remember a famous statement from a famous book entitled The Keys of This Blood? This particular statement represents the sentiment as expressed by the late Pope John Paul II concerning his idea of what an ideal world system should be. Here is the statement. Quote, he, Pope John Paul, insists that men have no reliable hope of creating a viable geopolitical system unless it is on the basis of Roman Catholic Christianity. End of quote. This is taken from The Keys of This Blood by Malachi Martin, page 492. What's the implication of this statement? The clear implication of what John Paul II is insisting on is that when the church regains power, the world system she is going to set up will be based solely on Roman Catholic Christianity. The collective expression of Roman Catholic principles is in the canon laws. It has always been the ambition of the papacy to rule the earth by her worldview of Christianity and of how life is to be ordered on the planet. When this begins to happen, the mark of the beast will be the natural result. This church policy I am going to talk about is a particular statute in the canon laws that is being practiced by Roman Catholics around the world. When you examine this particular law in the canon, you will see clearly that it bears a striking resemblance to what the prophet John warned us against in Revelation 13. You are going to see some amazing information that you have neither seen nor heard of anywhere else before as an end time prophecy student. In fact, I am going to give you a pictorial illustration demonstrating beyond the shadow of a doubt the striking resemblance between this church creed and the mark of the beast. Not only that, but I am going to show you how this church policy has subtly insinuated the number 666 as a part of the religious scheme. This is not just a rehash of old information about Vicarus Philidii. That's tale news comparing to what I am going to show you. In order to get an idea, as to the relationship between this particular statute in the canon laws and the mark of the beast, I want you to think about the relationship between type and anti-type in the scriptures. One example of a type is the offering of sacrifices in the Old Testament. We all know that the sacrifice is a type of Christ, the true sacrifice. Thus the type is a symbol and the anti-type the reality. What I am saying to you therefore 
is that the mark of the beast will actually be the antitype of an existing religious tradition that has been practiced in the Church of Rome for centuries. This is all the more reason why our sincere Christian brothers and sisters in the Catholic Church need to know about this. If what they are practicing in their churches is actually a dress rehearsal for the reception of the mark of the beast, then the possibility of receiving this evil mark unawares is highly likely, since it is already a long-standing tradition in the church. Rome is going to be absolutely angry at this revelation because it is going to blow the final lid off their dark secrets and exposes the papacy as the chief villain of Revelation 13. This information is so damning that it could cause conscientious Roman Catholics to leave the church in droves. Due to the controversial nature of this information, however, I cannot give it to you in detail on this video. You will have to go to this website and have the entire course downloaded to your computer. Go to www.prophecyecourse.com and download the End Time Prophecy eCourse. The End Time Prophecy eCourse is arguably the most revolutionary and controversial prophecy study on the internet. You are going to change the way you think about End Time Bible prophecy, guaranteed. Thanks for taking the time out to watch this video. Hope you enjoyed. Until we meet again, continue to be the most diligent student you can be of the prophetic word. God bless.